Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Justin Rudd. Oh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, my contribution on part two, I'd like to um, base around some of the discussion contained in the regulatory. Uh, impact statement, because that canvases uh, the degree to which um, the department, under the direction of ministers, explores alternatives um, to uh, the tool that was eventually settled on to, to um, underpin the Bright Line test, and that was the residential land withholding tax. Uh, and I think it, what's interesting, which is um, set out in part two, but what's interesting uh, was in the setting out of um, the problem definition before um, officials went out and consulted on the options that are then contained in part two. The problem definition um, is obviously quite broad that we see uh, that the government has used in that consultation document and uh, in the subsequent regulatory impact statement. So it's the government is concerned with high house prices, uh, something we can all uh, agree is of major concern, particularly in the Auckland region. Uh, other possible causes, both on supply and demand signs, are being separately considered. We wait with bated breath. But property speculation is seen as one of a number of causes of the current um, prices. So, obviously, up front, some acknowledgement of uh, the issue. Uh, but there are some limitations in our ability to use an evidence-based approach in dealing with some of those issues. And those are included in the regulatory impact um, statement. Uh, because it does set, set out that one of those limitations um, is, uh, is, of course, the lack of information uh, that we have uh, on the exact um, breadth of the, uh, over specu uh, the speculator offshore speculator issue. And we see on page one of the regulatory impact statement, it states that the exact fiscal and compliance cost figures for the proposed Brightline test are not available because Inland Revenue does not currently have accurate data on the types and levels of land sales occurring or how much is collected under the current land sales rule. So we have had to make some assumptions, uh, but I think it's fair to assume, as Labor um, obviously has, uh, that the issue of overseas-based foreign speculators is significant in terms of the impact it's having, which is essentially what part two uh, speaks to. But the other limitation is also set out in the regulatory impact statement, and it states that the analysis in this RIS needs to be considered in light of the additional constraint faced by inland revenue at the present time, which is not just lack of data, which is the inability to make significant systems changes in advance of the relevant stage of development of its business transformation program. So I guess my question is to the Minister. Um, in considering um, the various mechanisms in order to underpin the Brightline test, which included um, relying on existing compliance measures, option two, status quo, but provide more guidance on tax obligations, a bit of an education program, option three, status quo, but review effectiveness of Brightline tests in three to four years, so have a punt, see whether or not it's working, option four, introduce a withholding tax on sales of residential property made within the two-year Brightline test. Um, in amongst all of those options, what options were not canvassed as a result of the constraints that IRD have articulated as a result of the significant systems changes they are experiencing as part of its business transformation program? Was there anything that wasn't considered because of those constraints? Um, I'm interested to know, there may not have, it may, we may have canvassed everything in the submission process that we then are now debating in part two, but I doubt that would be um, the case because we've heard uh, instances before where IRD have expressed concerns over those limitations and their ability to, um, uh, to alter the rules under which they operate. But I do want to come to the question of compliance, because the reason that we've fallen on the uh, uh, resident withholding tax option is because obviously IRD have determined that other forms of compliance would be less effective, as I mentioned in um, uh, prior option. Option one, rely on existing, so the status quo, or more guidance uh, around obligations was dismissed. Now, why was that dismissed? Well, it's set out in the regulatory impact statement that the reason that the withholding tax option in part two was, was chosen uh, is set out in Paris 789. New Zealand taxes its tax residents on their worldwide income. 
New Zealand also taxes foreign investors on income that is sourced in New Zealand. Mr Chair. Jacinda Ardern. When a foreign investor has a branch or controls a subsidiary in New Zealand, tax can be imposed on the New Zealand sourced income of that branch or subsidiary in the same way as it would be on New Zealanders. However, when the foreign investor does not have a New Zealand presence, it is more difficult for New Zealand to collect tax from them. New Zealand's tax system operates on the principle of voluntary compliance, which relies on taxpayers understanding their tax obligations and how the wider tax system works, keeping in mind that we do operate somewhat of a don't ask, don't tell operation here as well. Foreign investors may not always have the same level of understanding as taxpayers based in New Zealand, and they do not have the same level of connection to New Zealand that would otherwise create an intrinsic incentive to voluntarily comply with their New Zealand tax obligations. I think that last statement's quite interesting. They do not have the same level of connection to New Zealand that would otherwise create an intrinsic incentive to voluntarily comply with their New Zealand tax obligations. I think you could apply the same rule of thumb generally um, that one uh, who may, may, for instance, use New Zealand, for instance, as a tax haven, may also not have concern for perceptions uh, and reputational risk for New Zealand around their use of a New Zealand-based tax haven as well. Because I guess what IRD are pointing out there, that is unless you have a domestic connection to New Zealand, your sense of obligation to us, be it um, in, in your literal uh, tax obligations or even in uh, the reputational risk you may pose by the way that you conduct your affairs is not top of mind. Um, a reason perhaps for us to be somewhat more concerned, not just about compliance with those who should be covered by the Bright Line test, but probably more broadly within our tax system. I hope I'm not being too subtle in drawing that um, comparison uh, there, Mr Speaker. So I think it's a point well made in the regulatory impact statement that when actually it's canvassed in option two as well of the paper, option two of course was uh, simply maintaining the status quo but providing more information and guidance on tax obligations in relation to residential property. Now I'm glad option two wasn't opted for. The idea from my perspective that you can simply assume that with a bit of a pamphlet we can assume that tax obligations will be fulfilled I think would have been a bit naive and in fact that's expanded on in para 42 of um, the uh, uh, regulatory impact assessment. It says, the success of this option is dependent on another major assumption, that non-compliance with the proposed Brightline test will arise from a lack of information and knowledge about the tax implications of sales of residential tax. I'm sorry, I didn't pay, I just didn't know. If only that were um, a, a basis on uh, not complying with one obligations, I'm sure many will think. There will be instances where an improved understanding of the tax rules and one's tax obligations in relation to a particular transaction may lead to a high level of compliance. I, if only that were the case. However, there will be taxpayers who regardless of their level of knowledge will not voluntarily comply oh. with their tax obligation. Really? Sadly, IRD are articulating here what many of us will know, just because people know about their tax obligations will not mean that they merely skip to their IRD office in order to fulfil them forthwith. Um, so there is in this, there is a, a lot of interesting uh, issues playing out in this paper where IRD are freely acknowledging Knowledge is not enough. Uh, connection to a country is not enough. In fact, if anything, it probably undermines our system. Um, built-in assumptions uh, in this case, um, they have built-in assumption in this case that non-compliance is often deliberate, uh, is often deliberate. And I'm glad that officials have done that because that is a realistic take on people's um, approach to taxation in New Zealand, let alone the approach of those who do not have a, co a connection to New Zealand. So although I, um, I think that probably the option that officials opted for was the right one, we would do well to reflect on the rationale 
uh, for why it is that we opted for something more proactive. Um, but I would re like to highlight again, Mr Chair, that I'd be very interested in the Minister expanding on whether other options weren't canvassed.